There's like some titles in there. Right <laughs> out the gorilla pod. <laughs> mm-hmm. Feel free just, to jump in and give the message. Sneak this in. Sorry, it's dirty. Well, I like the two Ghostbusters, dudes. <laughs> you know. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Apropos to this. Oh, yeah, they tore two other buildings down today. It's a giant piece of it. What's your idea? Well, Guy is tomorrow. That is true. Yeah. So you should, like, film the download progress or something? Yeah, <laughs> the progress bar. Little star. How I, how, 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 how I win. How, how, how I win. It's Gaia Day. Today is the day that the Gaia mission, a European space mission, is having their big data release. They're publishing the positions, distances, and motions of over one and a half billion stars. That's precision mapping of stars in three-dimensional space using nothing but geometry. And that's why I have a fun prop. A 112-year-old textbook, laboratory manual on introductory astronomy. And it's all just geometry. Like, use a ruler, measure angles. So I spent all morning playing with this data. It was released at 3 a.m. my time, and by the time I woke up, around five, Twitter was blowing up about this data. So by 8 a.m. I was knee deep in plotting and making new graphs and, and now it's just after one and I have to leave to go to the airport. So this is half an explanation of Gaia video and half a travel vlog. Let's get it. I can't give a comprehensive overview of Gaia because I don't have time because I gotta go to the airport. It's hard to overstate the importance of this data. Like, I don't think I can't overstate it. It's gonna be one of those data sets that is groundbreaking and fundamental for a generation. Like, the next generation of astronomers will still be using this data because there's nothing that's gonna touch it for 10 or 20 years. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Another week, another trip. And so what makes today so profound in terms of Gaia, it's knowing that this is the data that I and a lot of my colleagues will study and use and try to understand for the rest of our careers. It's interesting to have this moment that is so clear that like this is the day that the Gaia data came out and we had a completely new understanding of what our galaxy looked like. So I've got several projects that I want to work on with Gaia, including follow-up on stuff that I did with Kepler plus Gaia. Uh, I'm laying the groundwork for projects with TESS. TESS just launched, we'll update in a few months. And then in about six weeks we have the Gaia Sprint, which longtime viewers of this channel will remember uh, I agreed to do a remote sprint in Seattle. So David Hogg and company are hosting a sprint in New York, and we're going to be doing a small event in Seattle in parallel. The other cool thing about making plots the day that Gaia came out is I get to feature them in my talk tomorrow. So uh, this evening as I've been sitting in the airport, I'm rewriting part of my talk to feature new slides. So I'll probably be up pretty late tonight. All right, it's after midnight. My talk is updated with new stuff from Gaia, which is awesome. Past my bedtime because I just kept finding cool stuff. Uh, these plots are awesome. Gaia rocks. How, how, how I wonder.